Mr. Speaker. Ensuring maritime security for our ports and surrounding waters is of high priority to Singapore. This is because the disruption to sea traffic along the Singapore Strait will impact not only our local economy, but also globally, as half of the world's total annual seaborne trade and 70% of Asia's oil imports pass through our waterway. As the member also highlighted, terrorists can target ships in our waters or attack from sea, as they did in the Mumbai incident in 2008. So in dealing with terror threats at, at, from the sea, Singapore adopts a whole-of-government approach to ensure comprehensive coverage of varied scenarios, as well as coordinated responses. This approach led to the setup of the Singapore Maritime Crisis Centre in 2011, which brings together the Republic of Singapore Navy, the Police Coast Guard, the Singapore Civil Defence Force, the Immigration and Checkpoints Authority, the Maritime and Port Authority, and the Singapore Customs. The SMCC maintains a comprehensive maritime situation picture, shares information between agencies and coordinates responses to deal with potential threats. The SMCC leverages technology to analyze information, detect suspicious patterns, and cue relevant agencies to investigate and take action. Let me provide two examples. In 2015, for example, the Crisis Center detected a potential ISIS sympathizer who was on board a tanker calling on Singapore. That individual was barred from entering Singapore. In another case in 2016, the SMCC received information about a hijacked tanker. This information was shared with the Indonesian authorities as the vessel was in their waters. This led to the ship's rescue. In that case, the hijack was not linked to any terror intent. Also, as part of whole of government efforts, the Republic of Singapore Navy's Maritime Security Task Force, which the member asked specifically about, feeds its information to the SMCC. This information is obtained from monitoring close to 1,000 ships passing through the Singapore Strait each day through a network of sensors such as coastal surveillance radars, electro-optic devices, and RSN chips on patrol. This surveillance is continuous both in the day and night. The Maritime Security Task Force key focus is on potential threats to the Singapore, and this is what Mr. Vikram Nair alluded to. While the Maritime Port Authority watches over the navigation of ships in our waters, for both their purposes, the International Convention for the Safety of Life at Sea mandates the use of the auto automatic identification system to identify ships at sea. This AIS, however, does not apply to warships. For ships that are not required or have not complied with vessel identification, their presence can still be detected via our network of coastal surveillance radars and electro-optic devices. On a daily basis, MSTF conducts threats evaluation for every vessel calling to Singapore's ports or transiting through the Singapore Straits. MSTF does this by deploying analytic tools to build profiles of each vessel based on attributes such as their voyage, owners, crew and cargo, as well as additional data shared by government agencies. MSTF would then decide the, operate, the appropriate operational response which includes, for example, closer monitoring, escorting, or even boarding the ship to mitigate the threat. Let me now move on specifically to the two recent incidents asked, by, uh, asked about by the member. With regard to the two recent incidents which resulted in collisions, our sensors had detected and identified the vessels involved in both collisions. In the case of USS John S. McCain and the Elnick MC, both were detected in our waters off Pedravanka. The RSN vessel RSS Gallant, which was patrolling our waters, had also established communications with the foreign warship as part of the standard procedures. 
Likewise, for the case of the dredger JBB Derong 19 and tanker Katika Segara, both were detected and identified prior to their collision that took place within Singapore waters of Sisters Islands. In both these incidents, none of the ships were designated as potential threats to security, and correctly so. As such, in compliance with standard protocols, they did not require close monitoring by the MSTF and by the rules of navigation under international regulations for preventing collisions at sea, the master and crew of the vessels involved were responsible to guide their ships safely through. The various parties involved with the collision will now have to investigate what went wrong and what remedial actions to take if necessary. The Transport Safety Investigation Bureau is also conducting an investigation and have announced that they will make their findings public. Mr. Vikram Nair. Thank you, Minister. So, in relation to the two collisions, uh, I understand that we were able to detect the ships, but obviously they were not subject to the higher level of security and therefore additional steps were not necessary. But what would the measures be if, for example, there was hostile intention detected on the parts of one of the vessels? Would it have been different? Those are very pertinent questions. Those are very pertinent questions and not theoretical at all. I mean, we saw what happened in the Mumbai attack. And obviously there are many scenarios. Uh, if we had, for example, uh, preemptive information that a particular ship was carrying either uh, illegal uh, cargo or uh, had malignant intent towards Singapore, uh, it could amount to boarding the ship for example, or keeping it in close surveillance. Uh, there are various scenarios played out, and this is what the MSTA does in exercise, if you have um, kept up with the uh, number of exercises that we've had at sea. Various scenarios are played out, whether it's cruise ships, whether it's cargo ships, and what kind of scenarios may result including hostage-taking, for example. So they are varied uh, to the extent possible. The planners and our security agencies together, the other agencies under the Singapore Maritime Crisis Centre, do play out these scenarios. And uh, we have, over the years, stepped up the level of exercises and there's a certain level of competency. But obviously, I don't want to give the false impression that all attacks can be mitigated. If there are suicide attacks, sometimes it's difficult, for example, uh, to stop them. But uh, this is um, a situation where you continue to look at the scenarios, continue to exercise and continue to anticipate.